All right, everyone. So in today's episode, I'm going to give you guys a standard recap. We're going to go over the trades from today. I'm going to break down my entries, my exits, how I chose the stocks I ended up focusing on. I did not double my daily goal today. I hit my daily goal, which is great. So it's a nice green day. I didn't double the goal. I had said this month that every time I double my daily goal, I'll teach a long class uh, focused on some aspect of my trading for that day. So in yesterday's class, I taught about how to start your own business as a trader. And then in uh, the class the day before, I taught about the scalping during the 30 minute uh, sort of profit window when the MACD crosses over at the beginning of the move, focusing on trading the front side of the move as aggressively as possible and not overstaying your welcome and trading on the back side. So today is going to be a little bit of a departure from those two classes of the previous two recaps and more of the traditional breaking down the trades from today and, and you know, kind of uh, going over what I actually was focusing on on each individual trade. Okay, so here's the day sitting at $7,235 in profit. And some of you guys may be wondering, Ross, where are you sitting versus your 100K goal for the month of July? I have surpassed it. I will hold you in suspense telling you how much I am up on the month, uh, but I have surpassed it and I have set a new goal. And right now, let's see, how many days do we have left for the month of July? We've got tomorrow, Friday, which has the potential to be a wild card Friday. That's always a hope and a prayer on a week like this where we've had big momentum. Today was a little slow. Tomorrow, let's see, could be a surprise, could be a bust, but I'm looking forward to it. And then we've got uh, three days next week. So that means we've got four days left in the month of July, and then we're rolling right into August. So a week from today will be August 1st. All right, so uh, this morning, my first trade of the day was um, Mira. And actually, by the way, yesterday, at about four o'clock, I was recording my recap um, for you guys, the, the my special class. Yeah, but you can go do that. That's just fine. So I was recording my special class, um, and at that time, PBM had started to squeeze up. Now, when I first pulled up PBM, I was like, you know, whoa, this thing is moving fast. But as you guys know, I don't usually like trading penny stocks, and this was at fifty-five cents when I first saw it. The thing that I have been aware of is that the last few trading sessions, we've seen some stocks that have made some big moves after hours. Soar did it just a couple days ago where we had um, right at four o'clock, it all of a sudden squeezes up, as you can see right here, goes from 40 cents to a dollar fifty. And so that kind of happened in a similar way on PBM. Gave us a really nice squeeze. Uh, and then I think some traders carried it over as a swing trade to today. But since it didn't ba uh, push higher and make new highs, it ended up dropping down, profit taking, and then selling off pretty hard. So I was a little disappoint disappointed, I guess, that it sold off as hard as it did. Um, and in any case, so I, I had the opportunity to trade it after hours yesterday, but you know, typically I, I don't trade after hours and I, I didn't want to take the risk on it um, today or yesterday. So, so I, I knew last night that PBM was gapping up uh, already. So I would be watching it this morning. So this morning around 6.30, 6.45, I pull up the scans on my phone and just try to get kind of a lay of the land. What's moving? How are things looking? And at that time I saw um, that it's, you know, to be honest, yeah, we had PBM and we didn't have much else that looked good. So PBM at 7 a.m. here, you know, was kind of right in this range, but I just thought it's a little too, I don't know, there's too many sellers. It's thickly traded. It's below yesterday's high. I want to be trading when something is stair-stepping higher. And at this point, I felt like it was sort of stair-stepping back down a little bit, coming to maybe a double top at best. So I disregarded PBM. I said, no, nah, I don't think it's going to work. And then Mira pops up, M-I-R-A. Mira, we traded just the other day. We had this big green day, then two red days. And now today looks like a red day as well. But right here at about 7 a.m., it started popping up. And I took my first trade long at 285. Uh, 280, sorry, no, it was, uh, it was actually 295. Um, so got in at 295 for the breakthrough three and ended up squeezing all the way up to 380. Um, I only made 470 bucks on it. I took two trades, both with small size. As I think I had mentioned in my recap yesterday, um, even though I had an incredible day yesterday and an incredible day the day before, today is a brand new day. 
So I'm starting at zero, position size, max 5,000 shares until I've gotten myself over $1,000 in profit. So just kind of, you know, breaking the ice, trying to get myself comfortable in the green. What is very easy to do is to have a big green day. And then the next day you come in like on that high and you swing big and you lose on the first trade, you're down four grand or something like that. And it's like, whoa, okay, things are getting real here. I'm already at my max loss in one trade. And then next thing you know, it's a big red day. So I, I am mindful of that and want to make sure I avoid that. So just starting each day fresh, like brand new day, clean slate. Of course, I'm aware of the sentiment in the market and I'm hopeful that we'll have another good day, but you know, I've got to trade the market that's right in front of me. So Mira gave me um, a couple of two trades, a little bit of profit, 470 bucks, and then uh, POAI comes up. And POAI, uh, initially, it pops up right here, and you'll see it actually popped up to a high of $1.68, and I got in right as it broke $1.50 right there. I got in and I added 58, 60, and 63. And on this one, um, I was like, okay, we've got something moving quickly and it has a headline. So I was kind of excited. And unfortunately, it ended up um, just stalling out and dropping back down. So on that first trade, I, I think I made like $100 on it. It was a tiny winner, but it was nothing really significant. And then ZV... S, sorry, ZVSA hit the scanners. And when I saw the ZVSA, I was like, the price and the float are perfect. I'm like, perfect price, perfect float. Oops, right here. Price, float. And I'm thinking, all right, here we go. This is something we can work with. This is 755. And this thing rips up here. And I took a starter at 450. And I stopped out at, what was it? It was like 420. So I ended up losing... $589 on that. And I was like, all right, uh, well, that's not great. And at that point, um, I was red on the day. Not by a lot, but I was red on the day. And then uh, CMAX comes up and we get a trade, a little trade on CMAX right here on this first uh, squeeze. Where'd my mouse go? Come on, mouse. Where are you? Mouse. There it is. Um, I got a trade right here. Okay. So we got this move to four, 450. I got in at 470, uh, took profit at 485, 490, added back at five. Um, and then let's see, there was, yeah. So let me just zoom in on this one minute chart. Okay, try to be quiet with that, okay? So, uh, yeah, so we got this move up here, traded that, pulls back, comes back up higher, rejects. Got a couple small trades on that was up 1600 bucks so i'm like okay you know recouped from red back into the green and then poai comes back up and starts to uh pull away so when POI, a, poai came back up right here i got back in it got a small little scalp here it then drops down comes back up again i got back in right here and got another trade up to this level it pulls back and then this was actually my probably best trade. No, sorry. Um, that was my best trade of the day. This one was a nice breakout right here. Uh, but unfortunately, I missed it. So traded uh, just the top of that move. And then we sort of pull back, dip back down. And then I got this breakout right here. This was really clean. And this led to a squeeze into the open. However, I took uh, full size on this trade. And then I added back full size right here at 51. And I took full size there because I was looking for a squeeze up to 65.75, a dip and a move up to 80, 90, maybe $3 at the open. And then the open flushed and dropped back down. And I gave back about 2000 off the top. So I peaked today at about 8,500 and uh, dropped myself back down to 6,000 on the day. And then I was able to recoup um, some of that on SLRX. And there was another trade, BLMZ, but I'll look at SLRX first. So SLRX, um, I got a trade on this at the open, squeezed up here, halted up, opened, dip and rip right here, up to a high of 440, made $1,200 on SLRX, ends up dropping back down, pulling back, found all of these stocks right off my scanners. These are stocks that were hitting the high day Momo scanner right here, or were on the top gainer scanner, or were on my running up scanner. 
So these are all stocks I found on the scanners. Uh, SLRX made a big move the other day, as you could see here. Mira, same thing, made a big move the other day. So for the most part, trading stocks that in the last couple of trading sessions have put in um, some really nice big green candles. But to be honest, I don't love that setup. And the problem is that's a continuation setup. And are you really going to get continuation on these? So when I looked at Mira, for example, I saw that Mira had this news headline. And let's just scroll down on this. So this is the news headline this morning. Um, announces positive discovery of um, Ketamir 2 selective NMDA binding mechanism action. So I'm like, okay. But, I, but part of me was like, this feels really similar. Wait, what was the headline back on Monday? So I'm going back and I'm looking back and I'm seeing reveals clinical success, optimized brain. Wait, is this not almost the same exact headline? Right? So I'm kind of like, wait, are, what, what are we, what are we working with here? Like, is this just rehashing the same headline? Why are they rehashing the same headline? So then I pull up the, um, I pull up the filings on it and I'm like, okay, well, so do they have, are they trying to raise capital? You know, do they have warrants out? What are the prices of the warrants, uh, the strike prices? So I, I'm trying to kind of figure out what's going on here because oftentimes when a company is putting out a very similar variation of the same headline, they're trying to create awareness for the company. And oftentimes that results in seeing an offering. So I was a little bit skeptical there. Uh, so that, that was on Mira. And that was part of the reason I traded it with small size this morning. And, you know, 470 bucks, like that breaks the ice. That's good. But the fact that I was sort of like, eh, I don't know, could take it or leave it. That alone says you should leave it. Like, that's like, if you propose to someone and they're like, eh, sure. Yeah, I guess so. Like, that's not what you want to hear. And this is the, the way I have to sort of think about a stock. Like if I'm thinking about trading a stock, I want to be excited about it. I want to feel like this has the potential. If I'm sort of like, eh, I guess I'll take a position. It's not, it's like, I might as well just not. And so I really probably shouldn't have traded Mira at all. The headline was a little suspect. It had this big move, but then it pulled back quite a bit. And you know, I just, yeah, I wasn't feeling it. So anyways, I, I, I traded it anyways, which I was partly because the market's been so hot, but it wasn't a clean trade. And then for the most part, a lot of the stocks I was trading today either didn't have like SLRX. Once again, no news on this one. We had this huge move the other day where it went up 300, almost no, it was, yeah, it's like 300%. Then it sells off, goes flat. And then today it goes from $2 to $4. No news, just like a bounce off the low. And we will see that from time to time. A stock that makes a huge move, you can get a nice bounce off the low, but don't expect it to go back to the highs. That's not likely. It happens very rarely. So that first candle making a new high on the daily, that kind of little bounce, you know, I mean, yes, we can get something out of that, but not a lot. Now, if I pull up my continuation scanner here, uh, AZTR, no doubt, has the biggest range in the last two weeks. Um, this is the one that went up 700%, but they did the offering and they priced it low. So the thing that was interesting to me about this offering on AZTR, I'll pull this up here in the actual filings. Um, so AZTR, this was the one that absolutely crushed it um, the day before yesterday. And so we get this just crazy big move. And then let's see, is this going to be it here? Um, so then, yeah, so sold 6.6 6 million shares, um, offering price of $1.50 each. And so $1.50, honestly, they're selling 6 million shares. Here's the thing that I don't really get. On this type of stock, how much volume did this have on that day? It had, let's see, full screen this. It looks like close to 100 million shares. So I had um, 76 million shares of volume, 76 million shares. So if they had been selling on the actual market, which they would have had to do through an investment bank, but if the investment bank had the rights to sell through a direct offering, they could have been selling at $4, $5, $6, right? Selling 500,000 shares, each, each dollar and a half it goes up. They could have sold and raised a lot more money 
than at $1.50 a share. $1.50 a share is a really cheap price for this offering. So honestly, I just found this to be kind of surprising. But I think the issue in this case was that um, in order to do a direct offering, they have to already have um, shelf registration. So uh, and they haven't they have to have not tapped it. So let's see. So S3 and they have to have organized and coordinated this with an investment banker, which um, and so they have the shelf registration. They just probably hadn't coordinated this with an investment banker. That's my guess, because a smart investment banker would have been selling these shares during the day. Now, that's what would have been better for the company. For traders like us, it's better not to have those 6 million shares of excess sell orders because that would uh, slow down this momentum. So we got big momentum. They weren't prepared to sell, but then the selling came in the next day and the stock's back at $1.50. You made them notes. You made some notes. I love those notes. I made them notes. All right, you make a couple more for me. So let's see. So AZTR, so that one at this point is really out of play. We're not going to get any more. I mean, well, I would say this. I know these are my fresh markers. These are my freshies. I don't want uh, these ones I'm going to put over here. These are for saving. You've got your own markers right there. Those are the ones I already gave you right on the floor. He's got my used markers. They're like not working so well. Okay, so is it possible you could get a first daily candle to make a new high? Sure, but you know, realistically, this one's kind of dead. And it's kind of the company's mismanaging of their offering that has resulted in the price being back down at a dollar. It didn't have to go that low, in my opinion, but you know, they, and I, they didn't ask me, so whatever. Anyway, so SLRX um, has not done the offering or a offering, but this one just came down and sold off hard. Well, it had no news on the initial move. It just went crazy. Shorts were caught by surprise, I guess, and then it came back down. Another little bounce coming back down. So these are these bounces are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller until either we get an offering or traders just stop trading it entirely. So that was um so so SLRX. Okay, so so after um SLRX, I got myself into the green and let's see. Um let me look to see. Um, I'm gonna check something over here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so that was a good one. Um, I'm gonna save that for maybe my next episode, my next full length class. I've got a nice, um, a really nice clip from a trade, but I'm gonna save that for the next full length class here. Um, so, so yeah, in POAI super disappointing coming into the open i was hoping that thing was just gonna rip through three and it just stalled out and you know what from the beginning it was tough so the problem with poai is that i ended up trading oh yeah you can use that i ended up trading a lot of shares so my fees and commissions are going to be higher i mean i was jumping in with 10 15 20 000 shares jumping in jumping out jumping in jumping out Kept thinking we were going to get a big breakout, got a couple of them, you know, I'm up four grand, but realistically, that's only 20 cents a share on 20,000 shares. So, you know, it just, I kept trying to set myself up for a big trade. Oh, this is good, actually, because I do need these. Thank you. But you know what? I just wasn't able to find much um, success with POAI. Who's that? Who's coming to visit with you? So, again, success is a relative term. I mean, I'm certainly green. It was a nice day, but... I was, I was kind of, you know, I mean, I was a little hopeful that I was going to have a really good day. So, so this is POAI and then, um, the bell rings. And at that point with POAI pulling back, PBM pulling back, kind of our leading gainers weren't holding up. So I was like, I don't know if I'm going to get more action. BLMZ starts to pop. And I did get a trade on this here, but boy, it was tricky. And it ended up doing this jackknife, um, one mention on these jackknifes is that when a stock does that kind of reversal right here, at that point, it's like no longer trustworthy. And if you look at POAI, you'll see that there were um, a number of these kind of drops. My computer's running a little hot here, POAI. So we had, uh, if we look at the one minute chart, we really did have a number of them. Look at this right here, right here, right here. And then look at all these topping tails. It kept popping and dropping, popping and dropping, popping and dropping. This thing was not easy to trade. So at that point, I was like, nope, I'm not going back into it. I can't trust it. This thing's not trustworthy. 
So that was the right move, I think, to leave it alone. It's come back quite a bit now. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see this. Okay, I'm gonna hold this here. You, why don't you go over there? You go, you go build something for me, and I'll chit chat with you in a little bit. Oh, there you go. Okay, so, um, yeah, so this is POAI. Uh, sorry, guys, for the distraction today. Um, let's see. So, SLRX, uh, BLMZ, and then what else do I have here? Oh, BBLG. Yeah, I got a little trade on BBLG. This one, um, just choppy, as you can see here. Pops up, re rejects, nasty. So took the loss on that, got in, got out quick. And, and that was it. You know, at this point, we're kind of running out of steam. Now, if I pull up um, my uh, top relative volume uh, right now, or top volume in the last five minutes, this will show us stocks right now that have the highest relative volume. Let me link this up here. Um, the only issue is that uh, sometimes you get relative volume spikes on something really light volume. This is an IPO. This is also an IPO, but IPOs are, I don't really like IPOs, uh, usually, unless it's really hyped up. POAI, it's got high relative volume in the last five, but so is there anything here tr like really trade worthy, trustworthy? I'm not seeing anything, you know, I'm just not. So yesterday I got myself up 51,000 and then um, lost about 9,000 off the top. Stopped at 42,000, called it a day. I, well, actually, I was still here, but nothing else was tradable. And today, got myself up 8,000, dipped back down to 6,000, and I'm back up here at 7,200, and things have kind of stalled out. So I did the best I could, but the window is closing. I know I see people that are still trading and they're looking at different things, but um, I just feel like there's a window each day, and once that window closes, it doesn't matter how much you're up or down, the window's kind of closed. So now you're getting into a range where continuing to fight is gonna be like trying to swim upstream. It, you're just fighting against the current. It's not easy. And you really are best off acknowledging that your next best chance of a big winner is probably tomorrow morning. It's not gonna be this afternoon. That's just statistically. And I know that from my own experience. So at this point, um, you know, I'm I'm pretty content just to say, decent day, hit the daily goal, that's solid. Pulling up the metrics um, for the month of July here. Now, I actually wasn't able, I have, uh, for some reason, I wasn't able to import my trades from yesterday, which was such a drag because um, I really wanted to go over those trades with you. But um, when I tried to import those trades, the tr the file was too big. I don't know if I took too many trades, but anyways, I emailed um, support and was asking, hey, can I import my trades? So uh, so anyways, this has been a really solid month. And like I said, we've got yesterday's in the books, 41,042. Today's in the books at 7,000. And we've got one, two, three, four more days. This month has been, I've been holding a pretty good average. Um, you know, I haven't hit the daily goal every day. I've had some days that have been below it, but the days where I've been beating the daily goal, I've been like doubling it or quadrupling it. I mean, it's been, I mean, this was eight times the daily goal. This was way, way above the daily goal. This was three times the daily goal. So right now I do still feel like it's time to be aggressive when something pops up that looks really good and is squeezing. And the challenge has been a little bit, uh, you know, ZVSA, why didn't that one go? It's got news, it's popping up, it's the right price, it's a therapeutics company. I don't know. I don't know. You know, why did AZTR go as much as it did? I don't know. It, the, you know, I mean, this is always going to be the way it is with trading. If you knew, you would just, you would make money on every trade you take and whatever. But, um, but it's, it can be tough. So uh, if you're someone who's been jumping quickly, and you've taken a few losses, and I've, had some too, like I did on ZVSA and BBLG, what I would encourage you to think about are, you know, like the stocks I've made the most money on, POAI, AZTR, SXTC. These are stocks that um, continue trending higher. So they made their first leg up and they just kept going. 
So that's the area where things are getting interesting. And that's where we're probably going to see better volume. But even this one, the volume did kind of taper until, you know, a little bit at the open. But um, but anyways, focus on what's continuing higher. So rather than trying to jump in that first pop and getting stopped out, wait for it to pull away. And just look for those dips. Watch the dips off support. So if you want to learn more about dip trading, I've got a great episode on that that I recently taught. So I'll put that up here um, for those of you guys that are just finishing this episode. And I'll thank you as always for tuning into these classes. I hope you really enjoy them. I hope you hit that thumbs up. I hope you're subscribed to the channel and I'll see you for the next episode tomorrow. And I'll remind you as always that, hey, my results aren't typical. Trading is risky. So manage your risk and always practice in a simulator before you put real money on the line. And I'll see you guys back here bright and early tomorrow morning. I'll be streaming for Warrior Pro members. So I'll see you guys in the morning. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you guys tomorrow.